It is my pleasure on behalf of everyone present here today to welcome the chief guest for this session. He holds a B.Sc. Engineering Honours degree from University of Morotua, Sri Lanka and an M.Sc. from NTNU, Norway. He further obtained his Ph.D. from the University of Saga, Japan. He started his career as a junior engineer in the private sector consultancy company and then he joined the CEB in 1991 and continue to serve there to date. He currently works as the project director Broadlands Hydropower Project at CEB and he's also an additional general manager of the CEB. He holds the position of the president-elect of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, commonly known as IESL, and is the governor, Region 10, American Society, uh, sorry, American Society of Civil Engineers, and the vice president of the Sri Lanka National Committee on the Large Jams and a member of the Strategic Council member, International Water Association. We warmly welcome none other than Dr. Kamal Laksiri to this special occasion as our honorable chief guest. I now invite Dr. Kamal Laksiri to deliver the convocation address. Over to you. Professor Lakshman Ratnayaka, Chancellor, sir, you are my teacher. Professor Lalit Gamagi, Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Nimal Rajapaksa, Professor Saman Tilabisiri, Dean, Faculty of Engineering, Heads of the Departments, Members of the Academic Staff, Registrar and other officials, Distinguished Invitees, Graduates, and their parents and guests, Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you again. First of all, let me thank you for inviting me for this important event of your convocation of this year of the Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology. It's a great honor and great pleasure for me to participate in this event as the chief guest. I thank you again for inviting me. Uh, and also, it's a great opportunity to meet some of the colleagues and teachers in this occasion today. SLEET, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology, as a leading higher, higher educational institute in the country, having produced more than 30,000 graduates by now, renders a great service to the nation, mainly due to two reasons, as I recognize. Firstly, giving a great opportunity to many prospective students in the country to pursue their higher studies who are deprived of such opportunity due to insufficient resources in our national university system in the country. Secondly, helping the country to save huge amount of precious foreign exchange. Otherwise, we would have incurred sending you all abroad to pursue your higher studies. I think in the present context with the world facing a pandemic and a war situation, the importance I do not have to explain any further. This message is from the future. If you are ready to face the future, you will need a place to start where the future meets the present. SLIT 2022 Main Intake for Student Admission starts now. With Bachelor programs in Computing, Engineering, Business, Architecture, Financial Mathematics, Law, Nursing, Psychology, Hospitality and Culinary, and many more. SLIT, the future awaits you. Dear graduates, today you are teachers, parents, loved ones, and the guests testify your academic achievement all the teachers and officials of the institute who are present here today 
and who have made a great contribution to your achievement are excited witnessing it. Graduation is a special day for you as graduates who reach another landmark in your life and to the institute which produced another batch of graduates. It marks the culmination of a phase of learning in engineering, each of you in a particular specialization. I am addressing as many of the, 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 the graduates today are as engineer, engineering graduates. It is a solemn occasion for the students and also for the teachers. The bond between the teachers and the students that is supposed to have been built through years of mentoring brings in an emotional content in the graduation day. This is also an opportunity to, to pay gratitude to all the teachers who in their own way have contributed to shaping the young minds while they have been serving to our Nobel profession. Some of you may have fared extremely well, some others may moderate, and the rest have reached the level of securing a pass. But for all of you, this is not an end point to your academic life. I have learned that many graduates of your institute have been chosen to pursue their postgraduate degrees in local and foreign universities. Many others are employed in the country and in foreign countries as well. The common message I have heard is that they all are performing well. You have been exposed to such activities that would not only give you a good problem-solving experience, but also emo emotionally bind you with the society around. We need to recognize that the above approach would invariably involve interdisciplinary efforts involving sciences, technology, engineering, humanities, economics, management, and other disciplines, depending on the objective of a particular de development effort. Opportunities for you to participate in applications of such interdisciplinary efforts to address a particular challenge enable a holistic learning experience for you. This builds the capacity to focus research and development to solving real life, real life problems rather than looking for problems that can be solved through research one is engaged in. Quality of engineering education as well as of research improves considerably in the process. Aligned with the above, it is my firm belief that your institute has nurtured you to develop your innovation skills and analytical thinking skills adequately. I congratulate all of you graduating today. All of you must have gone through your respective program of studies and have been adjudged to be worthy of the qualification that are being awarded to you. You are now ready to face the exciting world with unbelievable societal and technological challenges. I also want to emphasize you that engineering is an international profession which help us to work and live anywhere in the globe. Now you are ready to take up that challenge. Engineers are creative problem solvers and help design and build the environment. Basically, it is the engineers who can make the change world expects a reality, and it is well proved by the statement, if you want to change the world for the better, become an engineer. As engineers, you have to be an important part of the nation building process through your respective capabilities that you have acquired here and elsewhere. Today, there's ample scope for innovation and entrepreneurship. The way our country is evolving, the opportunities for the capable ones will continuously expand. Me pani vede anagatayam. Hetha jayagan na adama sudanam vena obara galapenni anagatay ha vartamane ekat vena tanak. Street Dida Susidek Nama Aydum Pad Barganim Arabuna, Pariganaka Engineer, Vyapar, Grunirmana, Mulliganite, Niti Vede, Heather, Vidya Addene, Mano Vidyava, Agan took a Satkara to Upa di Patamala Rasa Oba Venuin, Sleet Heta Dakin Oba Venuin. To become a successful engineer, you need to be active from today itself, and only that.
Not only that, you also need to update your knowledge throughout your career. Your learning of engineering should not stop with your academic studies here. You need to continuously engage in updating your knowledge to become a successful engineer and also to be updated with the fast developing technology. Engineering knowledge today has a very short life and lifelong learning is needed to keep individuals' knowledge and skills up to date. In this regard, continuing professional development, CPD, come into action to assist you after your university studies. Continuing professional development, or CPD in short, is the planned acquisition of knowledge, experience, and personal qualities for proper execution of our professional and technical duties throughout our career. It is a framework for lifelong learning, and because of that, CPD has become so relevant for an engineer. The professional engineering organizations like ISL conduct CPD programs to this effect, and I suggest to all of you to attend and follow various CPD programs such as lectures, study tours, workshops, etc., as a preparation for your future career development starting from now on. It will help to improve your knowledge and skills. Hence, I encourage you to follow these programs whenever possible. I remember as a young engineer, about 35 years ago, we had very few such opportunities those days. We had such programs once a month, like again limited mostly to Colombo, and we had to attend in person. But today, thanks to the technological advances, and also prompted due to the COVID situation, many of these programs can be attended online from your own location without any physical presence. Other reason why you need to be active on continuous professional development is that you will not learn everything in the university. St you still need to learn many things outside your university programs. For example, as an engineer, it's not enough for you to be technically proficient. You need to have business savvy. If you are going to be a leader, you need to understand what is a financial statement, read the organization chart, understand a legal decision relevant to your organization or project. Know how to negotiate contracts and be familiar with myriad of other functions that every engineer needs to know. Otherwise, you would not understand how to interact when a finance manager or lawyer or human resources manager whom will be the members of a, in a team you may, head, you may have to head gets in the way. From my own experience as a project director, more than 50% 50, 50 of my work involves non-engineering tasks such as financial, social, contractual, environmental, which are mandatory to attend by me for the successful implementation of work scope assigned to me. I, ha I have so far not heard any engineer engage totally in engineering. Today, in this culminating event of your university life to you, the fresh graduates, the message I would like to give is that to give a start to your lifelong learning from tomorrow itself. உங்களுக்காக <laughs> 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 When you become an engineer, your professionalism is measured not only by how good you are in your designs or other marvelous works you may, you will do in your career, but also how ethical you are. <clears throat> this is very important aspect and seem to be disregarded by many in today's context. As you start to practice as engineers soon, you will learn about the code of ethics applicable to practicing engineers. I believe you must have gained an introduction to ethical behavior starting as engineering students. 
that will be a good start for you one day to be an engineer of good ethical conduct. Today in the society, we all can see various issues affecting the well-being of the people. And if you look at closely, you can identify some connections of these issues to the unethical behavior or performance of learned professionals, including engineers. This is a serious situation. As engineering graduates, I think it is necessary for you to concern about ethical behavior as fresh graduates itself, which is very important in becoming a successful engineer. With that, let me conclude my speech in this important event of your graduation today. I wish all of you graduate, graduating today a very successful career ahead and hope to see you all see in the engineering community. I thank you very much again for inviting me to this uh, important event and wish a pleasant day to all of you. Thank you very much.